Hey, today we're talking about why DNA tests available at Family Tree DNA and how it can help you with your genealogy research. This is part two of a three-part series. In part one, we talked about the Family Finder, which is the autosomal DNA test, kind of similar to a what Ancestry does. In part three, we're talking about the mitochondrial DNA and tracing the mother's line. Well, before we get on with part two here and the Y DNA test, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time we upload a video. As a reminder, Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Make sure you're hooked up with all those. Links are in the show notes below. I'd like to point out that this is not sponsored by Family Tree DNA, but is provided to you with uh, the idea that you can have a better understanding of what tools are available to you and to give you kind of an inside peek, kind of under the hood, at Family Tree DNA to see how it can help you with your genealogy. If you're interested in signing up with uh, Family Tree DNA, I put a link, an affiliate link, in the show notes below. I'd appreciate it if you use that link if you decide to use their products. Uh, also, know that this is a footnotes episode. Well, okay, I call them footnotes because it's in the footnotes where the real sources are, and today's real sources are two. Clayton Condor, the Director of Marketing at Family Tree DNA, and Megan Peters, who is a project manager there as well. All right, so a quick note about Y-DNA. And if you're not familiar with Y-DNA, it, it is really only for the male line. And well, men pass down 100% of their Y-DNA to their sons. So it is a very powerful tool when tracing your family line because you can trace back uh, the Y-DNA on the male line for thousands of years. And so, well, we're going to get into that here in just a second, uh, but I wanted to also remind you that I've put together a playlist of all of my DNA episodes. I'll put a link on the screen right now for that, as well as in the show notes below. So now let's continue the conversation with our experts at Family Tree DNA, Clayton and Megan, and learn about the tools that they have that will help you with your Y DNA test results right now. Well, the conversation continues now with Y DNA. So tell us about the Y DNA side of, uh, of your website there. Okay. So, um, at family tree DNA, we offer a lot of different, um, versions of Y DNA testing. And I know we touched on this a little bit, um, in our previous, uh, conversation that we had with you. Um, but Y DNA is passed on from father to son. So our Y DNA test is for males only. It, it traces back your paternal line. And uh, we offer different variations. We have the 37, the 67, and the 111, as well as the big Y 700. And depending on the type of research or what your goals are, um, we recommend um, certain tests over others. Um, as before, we've also mentioned joining group projects. Group project administrators are really, really good at, you know, you, if you've joined a, a surname group project or you're, you've taken a Y DNA test like you started, we recommend always starting with the 67 typically. Um, but you've taken your 67, you get your haplo group back, you join a haplo group, group project. You know, you can contact your administrators and say, you know, here are my results what test do you think I should take next and they'll be there to recommend it for you as well as you, know, you can always contact our customer service department also and so they can help we, you if we go take a look at the Y DNA um, part of the website there um, are there different features for Y DNA versus say the family finder um, yes you're gonna get different tools and um, features so uh, let's, let's take a look at those Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, this is going to be our, this is our dashboard as we covered the last time. Um, and we've moved up the, we've rearranged it where your Y DNA um, results are going to come up at the top of your dashboard. Um, again, you can reorganize your dashboard. You can to have Family Finder, um, the Family Finder widget show up first and um, things like that. So, 
Uh, we typically recommend the Y67 tests in the beginning. These are all the tests that this person has taken. Um, if you, for instance, take a Y111 though, you're gonna have all of these other tests show up because you've tested all of these um, markers. Um, I was just so, gonna ask you if you could explain that for folks who might not understand the differences in the numbers, that those are, are the number of markers that they're testing in the, in the DNA. Uh, yes. Basically. So the way I explained it in one of my previous episodes when I was just talking about DNA in general is that the higher number uh, Y DNA tests you take, the more finely tuned results you'll get. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, it's completely correct. <laughs> I think I not explain it any better. Okay. Um, <laughs> so our Y DNA um, test features include, you know, we have also not only our family finder autosomal DNA matches, but um, you, we have Y DNA matches. So, and it's, it's really important, I think, to point that out because when you're talking about our database, and I, I know it's like obvious, but sometimes it's not, it should be obvious, but it's not always that obvious, but you have people that have taken, maybe haven't taken the family finder test. Um, but have taken the Y DNA test. So just because someone isn't a match in your family finder doesn't mean that you're not going to have other matches in your Y DNA that maybe you didn't see in your family finder because some people, you, you know, you don't have to have a family finder to take the Y DNA and same goes, you know, vice versa. So super. Uh, yeah. So we've got matches, ancestral origins, um, your matches map advanced matches, haplogroup origins, migration maps, YSTR results, your haplotree and SNPs, the SNP map, and then um, we also, you can have a little fun little thing where you can print certificates like your haplogroups and that you've tested with family tree DNA. Um, but I'm gonna let Megan go a little further into uh, the Y DNA, um, what you get with your Y DNA results and explain those a little bit further. Well, while you're transitioning over to Megan, I'd also like to remind everybody that when you take a Y DNA test as a male, a hundred percent of the Y DNA is passed down from the father to the son. Uh, so that Y DNA uh, could be thousands of years uh, deep. I mean, that same Y DNA could go back for generations. Yes, correct. Absolutely correct. Um, and so that's why, um, we have these kind of stair-stepping tests. Um, like you mentioned before, Y12 is definitely going to look back, um, uh, kind of all the way, um, back as you were saying, and your matches are going to share a common ancestor further back in time, um, or likely share a common ancestor further back in time, just because we are only comparing a small amount of information together. And so we'll start with the matches page so that we can see kind of what that looks like. Um, so we have um, names of all of your matches here. We can sort by all of the different matching levels. Um, so if you have a match at 37, but you don't at 111, but you're still interested in them, then you can sort back to that matching level. Um, we have a concept of genetic distance, which is the um, amount of differences between your DNA, your STR values. And so Y12 through Y111 are going to solely look at your STR values, um, single tandem repeats. And so, um, this person um, and our kit owner has one difference between their um, STRs. Um, it'll list their, the person they, the user listed as their most distant known ancestor. So the furthest person back on their Y DNA that they can, that they have researched and found. Um, it'll also list that user's haplogroup. Um, and so if you're, specific um, SNP, which is here, matches this user, then, I mean, chances are you have like a really close um, ancestor, a close person in time. 
um, that you both share. And then match date, um, just like the Family Finder matches had. Um, okay, so the you... SNP, just to let everybody know who's not familiar with the terminology, the SNP is the SNPs, and that is this, uh, remind me, the... Uh... the single nucleotide polymorphism. Thank you. <laughs> See, this is why it's... it doesn't roll off the tongue so easily. <laughs> so now, isn't it true, though, if, and maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is right, if you have tested uh, with, what is it, 34 markers? 37? Uh, 37. 37 mm -hmm. markers, and then you upgrade to 67, those mm -hmm. genetic distances are going to change, correct? Yes. Um, you're going to share, you're going to be analyzing more STRs. And so that brings with it more chances to not match up perfectly. And so each um, testing level will refine your matches further and further and further. Because there's so more what information. was a zero uh, genetic distance might become a one if you upgrade. Yes. Okay. Exactly. All right. And so I think when I was first learning this stuff, um, one of the things that I got confused by was that genetic distance terminology because I thought it meant like, okay, a father and son is a genetic distance of one. That's not the case. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, this is a genetic distance of zero. So this could be a father son situation, or they could just be, um, a cousin who happens to share all of their STR values, share them, to, they match up perfectly. Um, and this one, uh, could be a father and son, but they just happen to have a mutation in between their generation, um, which is definitely possible. Thank you for that explanation because it's those mutations that create those genetic distances, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So don't be confused by that <laughs> for the audience at home. Um, if you have uh, tested all the way up to the big Y, um, there will be additional STR values that the big Y will provide, will analyze. Um, the big Y test is mostly focused on um, SNPs but it will test, um, it, it will also test STRs. Um, and so this will list the amount of STRs that the two individuals who both took a big Y test, um, the ones that overlap, and then if they are an exact match to each other. So that's not to be confused with genetic distance to where this is the 111, 111 um, STRs. This will just analyze the additional STRs that the big Y is providing. Now, what if you've got two people in this, two people in this list? So you've got the person who's tested, like let's pretend it's us, although we're not, we, can't, we don't carry Y DNA. But if, if we are the test taker here, and we have tested at 67 markers and somebody else has tested 37 markers. How does that relate in the, in the list here? So they would be a match to you at the 37 level, but not the 67 level. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's going to, it's going to default to the lowest common denominator basically. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And we also list where each match um, has tested. So these all have tested at Y111. Um, they've also tested a family finder and a big Y. So um, if you're confident they're a closer match, then you can see them on your um, family finder matches page potentially as well. Wonderful. Now it says run report. Now this, this report that we're looking at here, we've already run the report, correct? Yeah, so if I'm looking for a specific surname or if I want to sort by a specific um, group project that I'm a part of, I can kind of filter my match list by a couple different um, pieces of criteria and then I can run the report to get a, um, a subset of my match list. Fabulous. The haplogroup, can you, can you briefly explain what a haplogroup is? Sure. Um, so a haplogroup is a ancient migration path. And so to better illustrate that, um, I'm going to go over to another page um, called our migration maps. 
haplogroups are ancient migration paths and they will show where um, different groups of people kind of went and how they are related to each other. So every male and every, uh, yeah, every male basically comes from one um, group of people or one common ancestor. And so that person was around or that group of people were around um, thousands of years ago. Um, it's thought that they were um, located in Africa. And so we call that person um, kind of like Y-DNA Adam. And okay. so um, as he or that group had further and further generations, over time, um, the Y-DNA DNA itself kind of had slight mutations um, as the generations progressed. And so we can track those mutations um, to a common ancestor where that mutation happened and then know that, you know, it's kind of another branch um, as we, you know, see the the map of those mutations. So we can say that, um, give people a designation like J, haplogroup J, is found um, throughout the Middle East and, the, and South, um, Southern Europe. And so we can kind of have somewhat of an idea of where people come from and the groups of people that their ancestors were associated with based on their haplogroups. And um, even today, we can use um, SNP testing and tests like the big Y to get further and fur further um, in time, so closer to us, um, and get individual SNPs to where we can see um, more refined family groups um, rather than just you know, thousands of years ago, you were associated with this group of people. We can get closer and closer in time. Um, and especially as the science continues, um, we'll be better able to um, get those close family groups, those closer in time family groups. I know when I was working on uh, one of my family members, uh, his Y DNA, you can actually see the tree and how they stagger across. And what's cool about it is it's constantly developing. I mean, as more and more people get tested, we're starting to find new branches and things we didn't know about before. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, exactly. So speaking of kind of branches and a tree structure, um, we can map these haplogroups to a kind of phylogenetic tree structure. So this is our haplotree. Um, so like I was saying, you can uh, map out how these haplogroups um, are like laid out. You can map the haplogroups. Um, you can do that on an actual like physical map or this phylo tree. And so this will show parent branches and um, sibling branches like these two um, of different SNPs or mutations that happen. And so this user's like terminal SNP or the farthest down in the tree that we, that he's gotten so far, um, is down here. And you can see all of these other, um, positive SNPs that kind of mutations that have happened throughout, throughout time. Now I know that, uh, when I was working on a family member's, um, tree, his Y DNA, and the admins for the group were asking me, oh, can you go get him to test SNP number or whatever and another SNP number, very specific SNP numbers. It was starting to get a little beyond what I understood, but uh, apparently I guess you can test certain individual SNPs, but I think you have to do that at a third party. You guys don't do individual SNP testing, do you? We do. Oh, um, we okay. do individual SNP testing as well as SNP pack testing. And SNP pack testing is very um, kind of, you know, better bang for your buck almost because um, we can get a high level um, kind of branch and then test all of these SNPs or more. Like that's a small example of how many SNPs are included in a SNP pack. Um, but then if you wanted to test one of these individual ones, you could definitely do that with us depending on which SNP it is. So if... If, you know, bringing it back to more current times <laughs> and somebody's not interested in the deep 
ancestry, haplo trees and all that, but they just want to find out who their father is or their grandfather. Um, and so they want to use Y-DNA testing to do that. Where do you recommend they start? They've taken a Y-DNA test and now they're opening this up and they're going, okay, now what? Yeah, so starting off with your matches is a great, great place. So um, going to your matches page, seeing who the most likely candidate is for getting to start in contact. Um, so somebody with a genetic distance of maybe one or even better, zero. Um, maybe if there are surnames in common. So sometimes people will have, uh, even though they're all people related to their on their Y DNA, their paternal line, the surnames will be changed over time for various number of reasons. But if you have kind of a pattern of similar surnames, then that's a great place to start. That's a kind of a but the really great clue. So similar surnames, um, contacting matches, um, just kind of reaching out to them, and then joining group projects. So we have um, an adoptee project that's really great at providing resources and tips and things like that for people to um, kind of to begin that journey. And so those are some really good spots. And then um, obviously like, like an administrator would be able to, based on your specific case, give you more detailed um, kind of path to follow. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the tour of the Y DNA part of this uh, three-part series. And uh, next time we talk, we'll be talking about mitochondrial DNA. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So now we've covered the website, the family finder, the Y DNA, all of the in this series. In part three coming up, we're talking about the mitochondrial DNA and how it can help you trace the female line in your family history. As a reminder, if you're interested in signing up for any of the Family Tree DNA products, there is an affiliate link in the show notes below. I would totally appreciate it if you would use that. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time we upload a video. Genealogy TV has a newsletter, a website, and a Facebook page. Links for all that are in the show notes below. If you want to learn more about DNA in general, there are cards on the screen right now to help you with that. Well, it's time for you to go find your ancestors. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.